this, this is a really kind of a funny story, and you'll see in a minute. The term, the bigger the better, doesn't always apply to everything in Japan. Mm -hmm. Take a look at this, the world's shortest escalator. It's tiny. This pointless point. escalator <laughs> in a Japanese shopping mall is really just the thing for those who can't muster up the energy to make it down the whole five steps. You know, I mean, you think about sometimes there's um, ramps in place maybe of uh, steps, but I've never seen an escalator with five steps. Hey, look how easy they're look how easy they're getting around though. I think it is functional. <laughs> it is functional. Just a little clogged up probably at traffic time around holiday season, I would imagine, but otherwise yeah. working they're pretty well. Moving right along. <laughs> well now you can go into your Friday afternoon telling everybody you saw the world's yeah, you smallest get, escalator. You can get, take a break for two seconds there <laughs> on your walk through the mall. Exactly. <laughs> okay, we'll give you another story that you can talk about today at the uh, water cooler. Believe it or not, what you name your baby in Iceland can land you in hot water, really. And the government can strip your baby of its name forever. Hopefully no babies are named hashtag anymore. That's what <laughs> happened, <laughs> right? This 15-year-old girl pictured on the left, it happened to her. Right, but her name isn't even close to something like hashtag. No. It's Blair, <laughs> which is not included in the country's registry of 1,853 approved girl names. That's not that many if no, you think about it. No, it's not. It's not. So she basically can't use her name, and, and it's referred to as simply girl <laughs> on all of her <laughs> official documents. Weird. Okay. Well, now she's suing the state that she lives in for the right to use her beautiful given name, which actually means, it, the actual translation, mm -hmm. is light breeze. Right. And it's spelled B-L-A-E-R, right. I believe. So anyway, I don't know if they have a different version of Blair that's legal. I don't but know. They're, they're just like, not allowing that one. Apparently, it's it's odd. Can you Glad imagine? To be here in America, I'm telling you, poor <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow would have a hard time with babies named Apple and and you know and all the names we've been taught. Let's if you miss what we were talking about when we did a, one of our stories, we were talking about a baby that was actually named hashtag. So right. that was why we made a joke about it. But really, and there was also a baby named Facebook. Probably mm -hmm. wouldn't go over well in Iceland either. Mm -hmm. I, I bet that's Probably not on the list. Well, yeah. it's good to be here in America. <laughs> and back here in America, a 16 year old California girl. Use prescription sleeping pills. This isn't a very good story about oh, that's us. That's crazy. To lace her parents' milkshake so that they would fall asleep and then she and her best friend forever could get online after their 10 p.m. no internet use curfew. <laughs> <laughs> now, the mother Yikes. says this is the second time that this has happened. So she drove her daughter to the police department where she now faces some serious charges. Listen, don't drug your parents, number one, but I mean, really lacing the milkshakes, that is really kind of sick. I have to say, I mean that is dangerous. Just so you that know. you can get online after your curfew, unbelievable wow. what people will do Deviant to get to their there. computer. Nice. I'd be in big trouble because I'm reaching for my phone sometimes in the middle of the night to to look, you know, to look online or right. read my emails and stuff. Gosh, if I was a kid, I'd be in big trouble. I for know. That. I got in trouble for it. my dad fell asleep on the couch. And <laughs> me and my girlfriends we had a slumber party and uh -huh. we went over there and we put pigtails in his hair. <laughs> I think every girl face. did that, right? <laughs> yeah, not in too big of a trouble, but man, that is. Not funny. Oh my gosh, I love it. Too. I love one one of these days we'll have to do funny childhood stories and see if you can relate. We'll have to do that. Oh yeah, I'm well, sure there's some good ones. <laughs> here's a story I would say of Titanic proportions. You can mm -hmm. add actress Kate Winslet to the growing list of celebrities who will be taking a trip to the edge of space. It's reported that Virgin Galactic founder Sir Richard Branson gave Winslet the trip as a wedding present. Right. The actress married Branson's nephew, Ned Rock and Roll. That's really his name. Yeah. So yeah. is her name Kate Rock and Roll? It is now. <laughs> yeah. Just before Christmas. So they got married. Uh, Rock and Roll works for Virgin Galactic, <laughs> Galactic, which is launching a space tourism program out of space for in America near TRC by the end of the year. So it's exciting stuff. She's going to get to take a trip to space. I know. She joins more than 500 other amateur astronauts who have also paid $200,000 each to be passengers on the first commercial flight to space. And yeah, wow. I, I swear we did not say the rock and roll thing because we're talking so much about rock and roll with Rock of Ages. Literally, that is really the last name. Mm. It's a, that can't be real. It's real. Kate Rock and Roll. Wait. But it can't be his real name. He had to change that. <laughs> so we've heard. You can get by with a nice one. I'm just saying, that's yeah. what I've heard. Well, on the big screen, Matt Damon goes head to head with Bradley Cooper, and a classic thriller returns with a modern twist. Yes, Fox's Laura Ingle has more on what's new in theaters. Hey! A classic horror franchise unleashes a new installment with a modern day edge as Texas Chainsaw 3D brings a three dimensional chapter to the 1974 flick. 
What exactly did Granny do for a living? I have no idea. This time, the film follows a young woman who returns to Texas with some friends to check out an estate she inherited, along with everything else. Keep a close eye on the screen for appearances from cast members of previous Leatherface-led films. Several indies with awards buzz reach bigger audiences this week. The most swept ever went away. Including The Impossible, about a family who survived the 2004 tsunami, starring Naomi Watts and Ewan McGregor. Did he jab on his eggs? Oh, to beat you? Yeah, absolutely. Matt Damon and John Krasinski's Promised Land about a gas company looking to drill in a small town. I think you're really pretty, but I'm married, okay? So am I. Plus, Bradley Cooper and Jennifer Lawrence's film about starting over, Silver Linings Playbook. Life imprisonment without parole, death by lethal injection. The documentary West of Memphis follows the legal battle to free the men known as the West Memphis Three, convicted of murder 18 years ago. Peter Jackson is one of the producers of the film. Mr. Bilbo, where are you off to? I'm going on an adventure. And for those in the mood for a big budget blockbuster, check out Peter Jackson's directorial offering, The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, which has been filling theater since it opened on December 14th. Home is now behind you. The world is ahead. In New York, Laura Engel, Fox News. A lot of good movies. I want to see the Bradley Cooper one. Yeah. That, that one looks good. super good. But if you don't want to sit in a movie theater and your kids want to get out and about this weekend, you can take them sledding. That's right. News 13's David Romero actually found some snow not too far from Albuquerque. It's still a winter wonderland heading up to the Sandias, but it's not wide enough for some people to enjoy playing in designated areas. We have a set of specific criteria that we run through, and we have to meet all those criteria before we decide to open the area or not. Now this may be as close as you can get to the Coppoline Snowplay area, but forest rangers say there's still a lot more fun to be had up here. People are welcome to sled anywhere on the National Forest lands here in the Sandias at their own risk, but outside of those areas that are where sledding is specifically prohibited. And that's just what we found a little ways down the road. Chris Dyke and his family taking advantage of the snow in a safe area. I think that uh, if you take the proper precautions, uh, with the children and make sure the area is safe, um, that, uh, that that's fine. I mean, it's always sledding at your own risk, but uh, I, think, I think if you're careful that, it, that it's fine. But it's when people are not careful that you find this. A viewer sent us these pictures from over the New Year's holiday of people parked alongside bad spots on the windy road up to the crest. Rangers remind everyone not to block the road on those dangerous corners. In addition, there are at least three other specific spots you can't sled on at any time. Those include the 10K trailhead, the pit near mile marker 5 on Highway 36, and the Tree Springs trailhead. Otherwise, go out and, and have enjoy the snow, whether you're cross-country skiing or snowshoeing or sledding or just hiking on some of, the, some of the trails. We would encourage people to do that. Now, Ranger Parsons also tells us they are usually trying to open the Capulin area to coincide with Christmas vacation. Right, so. and while that hasn't happened yet, you know, there hasn't been a whole lot of snow, uh, the break is almost over for kids, so he says check their website daily for updates. Definitely. Now, the freezing temperatures did not stop PETA's lettuce ladies from making a stop in Knob Hill yesterday dressed in nothing but, you guessed it, lettuce. Hmm. Yesterday, these people for the ethical treatment of animals handed out tofurkey sandwiches, which is the tofu version of turkey. Wow, they must be cold. Right. The lettuce <laughs> ladies <laughs> say they want the Duke City to turn over a new leaf. As long as they're not turning over those leaves, then I think we're all okay. <laughs> but in 2013, they also gave out vegan starter kits, too. So this is what they want. They want you for this year to start eat, becoming a vegan and not eating the meat. Well, they made their point. <laughs> <laughs> they had to Maybe. be so Just cold. Some. I mean, I was freezing in a scarf and gloves and a heavy coat. So yeah, they did it. wearing lettuce leaves had to be tough.